The art of paper crafting comes in many forms, from origami sculpture to wearable cosplay and architectural miniatures. But there's one enduring type of paper craft that sometimes gets overlooked, the art of pop-up book design. We visited the studio of Matthew Reinhardt, award-winning pop-up book designer and paper engineer, to learn how he prototypes, engineers, and illustrates characters and scenes that jump out of the page, including the delightful pop-up scenes in the new book, Star Wars, The Ultimate Pop-Up Galaxy. Matthew, thank you so much for welcoming us here. This is this is your art workshop. Yes, um, this is it. This is this is where the magic happens, I guess. Um, it's just a you know messy desk and messy a little office, and um, you know I just cut and fold paper and turn it into into this. I mean, it really is a, a magical process. Pop-up books are things that we all grew up with, and not a lot of us think about the engineering, really, that goes into it. So I'd love to see if you could walk me through uh, one of the spreads in this book. Of course, it's the new Star Wars Ultimate Pop-Up Galaxy book. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many different pop-up. What do you call them? Are they uh, dioramas? How do you think of uh, them? Uh, well, in this one, there's just a lot of environments. I guess diorama is a really good thing. There are these huge pop-up sort of dioramas in this book. Now, this is my third Star Wars book that I've done over the years. The first one I did was back in 2007. And we just wanted to do something different, you know? Um, so it, it's like we're taking you to all the different worlds uh, within the Star Wars, within the, the Skywalker um, story, you know, and saga. And I wanted to make, you know, these dioramas, but th then we, there had to be like an added extra thing that was a surprise to this pop-up. Because this already is pretty intense, you know? This is the Battle of Geonosis, right? And um, we wanted to add like sort of a surprise um, aspect to it. So there's always, within every pop, there's some movable interactive mm. motion. Um, so this one has a pull tab up here that you can just lift oh, back. Wow. And it shows off these other, you know, characters in the battle um, on Geonosis fighting the, the Separatist forces. Um, it's my job to know this stuff, people. <laughs> um, so, you know, getting to add in all these little details. Um, and this, I mean, this was a nightmare to design. I mean, it's, it's cool because I kind of get into this weird sort of creative space um, of just kind of cutting and folding and figuring out how this all works. But then there's many other steps afterwards where it kind of takes that sort of artist sort of like, you know, I'm, I'm inspired and I'm going in these weird places. And then you have to really, you know, sort of square your, square everything down and make sure that it works a thousand times over. So, you know, there's all these different pops within it. Um, I think this book has, a, I think it's about, let's see if there's five spreads, I think there's at least 25 different pops in this book. And I was about to say, so structurally, when we think of a pop-up book, they're very big, but they're not at that many quote unquote pages, right? Yeah. Because there's all that paper that needs to fold together and hide in between mm -hmm. the spreads. So while there are five main spreads with these five main scenes, even within each spread, you have oh, yeah, four or five separate little individual pops, little yeah. vignettes that tell different parts of the story. Yeah. You know, I'm designing something big like this Death Star, which is a, a really weird design for a sphere. When you're making a sphere in a pop-up, usually, most of the time, it's like taking a basketball and flattening it, you mm -hmm. know? The, but this sphere, um, it, it, instead of, it not just only flattens, well, it actually flattens like this way, and then it folds in on itself. So this was like really, this is really, really complex. But then like some of these other ones on the sides, they're just as complex, like this little transforming Millennium Falcon here. So that's the Millennium Falcon from Solo. And then when you pull the little tab, it changes into the regular Millennium Falcon that we all know and love. So even small pops have that sort of moment. Um, this is actually one of my favorite ones from this from this book. And it's 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 still pretty complex. I mean, if we blew that up, it could be pretty amazing. And it's so amazing because a, pro a project like this takes you know the better half of a year, mm -hmm. and there's not only problem solving and illustration and art and design, there's engineering. It's a whole creative process. Let's start at the very beginning. Okay. So you know you're gonna do about mm -hmm. five spreads. You know there'll mm -hmm. be five big scenes, mm -hmm. lots of small pops. You know you want interactivity. You mm -hmm. want to have little vignettes. How does a scene like the battle on the moon of Endor? How does that formulate? And can we walk through some yeah, of the prototypes? Yeah, totally. Okay, so it starts off, and I work with Lucasfilm, we kind of come up with where we want to go and everything, we make up lists. And then the next step, which was very odd for this book, for my process usually, 
actually made sketches of kind of what would happen. Now, I don't know that the engineering is going to work for anything in, in these sketches, but this kind of gave me an idea of what would happen on each page. And it's, things changed. I mean, we didn't end up doing this pop here, which was going to be across, instead of the Battle of Geonosis, it was going to actually have the Battle of Geonosis happening. And then on the other side of the main pop, there would be the Battle of Kashyyyk. Because I wanted all those Wookiees and the trees and everything. That didn't have, it would have been very confusing about what was going on. So, you know, this is a way that we've sort of um, come up with what would happen on the page. Like, if you look at this, it's very, very rough. I don't even know that it's all going to work. And it's kind of amazing that it came out relatively close to what you know, was happening there, you know, there's the where, just the placement. Now, so after I kind of came up with what was happening on each page, I kind of took those pages and put them together to sort of formulate how the map would work. And I, when I did this, I also had to build something at the same time. So that I had a lot of these little small spreads built out so I could see that it would work and it would fold and that all these pieces would fit together. That's how it all starts. So you have the spreads and you're making prototypes. You mentioned tiny versions. Mm -hmm. It is just, you're taking scissors to paper yeah, and yeah. cutting it out and taping totally, things together? Totally, Like that's where it all starts, really. I mean, it, you have to figure out how all the paper and all the pieces are going to work together. So you just you take out scissors, you take out tape, and you just build this thing. I mean, that's, you know, you could, I guess essentially, you could, you know, do some sort of computer program but I don't know that program. And there's a lot of other factors that go into making these books that a computer wouldn't ever be able to, you know, figure out. Like friction of paper and that the weight of paper. And you could figure out some of those things mathematically, but sometimes you need gravity, you need all the real factors of the usability, you know, how yeah. someone's actually gonna open and close it a thousand mm -hmm. times in the lifespan of the book. It needs yeah. to be durable. Yeah. So these are some of the prototypes here. Yeah, so so early on, after I've sort of kind of made this map of things, um, then it's like right down to the paper engineering. And that's kind of a cool stage. I think my one of my favorite stages of, of the process because it's just like me in my studio cutting up paper and folding and figuring out how things work. So um, initially, I knew I was going to make a Battle of Endor, um, and you know, with all the, the trees and, and everything, um, and the Ewoks, and on this pop in, in particular, there is a um, there's there are these Scout Walkers that are in the forest area, and I had an idea about making vehicles move um, that popped up. So um, this is one of the original ones. You can see how it's just awful looking. You know, it's just scrap paper taped together. It's really junky. I don't know that it, it barely worked, but um, we're gonna pull it and see. This is just the, my first exercise of sort of making this um, mechanism. And just to, to see like, how could I make something that goes flat? So it's gonna, it's supposed to go flat like this. And it may not even be on the whole page. Sometimes I'll, I'll work out some of my engineering issues, just like on its own, by itself, you know, just on a piece of paper. But I knew that it had to go flat. And they needed to know that it would always be able to stand up. This piece would always, you know, go flat to be the front of the ATSD. And you know, this is one of the legs. And I knew that it was. I wanted to make sure that I could make something that moved and also still went flat, um, and could be flat both ways. So this is an, an early version of that mechanism. And then you know, I have to rebuild it. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll trace all the pieces in the computer um, and make die lines at an early stage like this, or I'll just sort of rebuild another one. So this is a sketch pop. Um, this is using you know some of the things that I did with this early pull tab little scout walker. This this has it uh, included in the whole space, and this is all handmade. I don't think, yeah, this is all just made by hand, um, but it's not the first time that I've done it. Sometimes what I'll do with a pop-up like this, it will be rebuilt over and over again to figure out how all these pieces go together. And you can see it's really rough. I mean, I'm not really trying too hard to sketch on it. I just want to get an idea of what is, you know, these things in different places. So this incorporates the pull tab of this walker. Right and there. you're tying that movement, that mechanism, to, to mm -hmm. other movements. That's well, the cool engineering part of it. Well, what I want, you know, like if you're using this, if you have something that's coming under the t uh, under the page that's moving just this, I mean, how? Why not use it a million times over? I mean, that's kind of what my philosophy is with a lot of the engineering that I do for books. Is uh, you know, we're working. Well, when you're making a pop up, 
We're working off the energy of this single page and everything is being built off of that, you know, with all these different structures and everything. And once you build one structure, that there are so many other opportunities just built on that one, from that one structure that you can work off of. And so if you've got something that you're using for one thing, why not try to find a way to use it in another way? And I thought that, that would be really cool because one, one pull tab and a lot of movement is a lot more fun. And, and you know, there's certain, there's certain things that you learn as, as you work on this longer and longer, but like the further away you get away from the page, the less energy there's gonna be with some of the pop-up, you're gonna get a lot more strength coming from this center fold. And um, as you move further outward, you don't have as much strength. So if I built something big and heavy over here, it may not necessarily open as much as something here. Um, but you know, I've learned a lot of ways to push it. I mean, I feel like everything, my, my whole mantra is, you gotta learn the rules, then you break the rules, then you learn new rules, and then you kinda start back over again. You, kinda, you wanna keep kinda pushing it. So everything I do won't necessarily follow the exact paper engineering rules that it might be based on, but um, I'm kinda forming up my new, one, new ones based on those. You, you have to push you know, the boundaries to make something different. So after I've made a pop like this, um, what I'll do is I'll very carefully take it apart with my X-Acto knife and scan all the pieces uh, and bring them into the computer. And what I'll do is I'll actually make what are called die lines. So these are the tr individual digital traces of yeah, all the parts? Yeah, that's what they, exactly. So these are die lines. And what, what you can see with this, these are die lines to all the different pieces. Now for a book like this, there were, God, there had to have been like 300 different pieces. So you can see that there are two different types of lines. There are these dotted lines, and that's gonna be where there's a fold. And then the, the solid line is where there's a cut. This is a tough part of um, the job because you have to make sure everything works right and you have to work out all these issues. I mean, this is a 2D image, but mm -hmm. it's a 2D image that needs to <clears throat> fold together in a 3D form, mm -hmm. and you add a fourth dimension of the actual fold itself. Yeah. That's a lot of layers of thinking. And if you saw, like sometimes when I'm building this, I'm actually constructing it in the computer, um, laying these different die lines on top of each other. It's just, it's, it's a wreck. And once I have the shapes that I sort of know, and once I'm sort of m mapped out where everyone's gonna be, whether it's from my just roughly sketched, you know, pops like this, I know there's gonna be a speeder bike here, I know there's gonna be whatever. The next step is actually making art guides for the artist I work with. I worked on this book with Kevin Wilson, he's great. And we're working on some more books together, so it's, it's a, we have a great sort of uh, rapport. So I make these really rough, that you can tell that some of the, the stuff is just like quickly painted, and then some of it is actual, just, you know, sort of photos pulled from online, and, and movie clip areas and things like that. So I uh, make all these notes for him to make artwork. Um, you know, the shapes of the trees, and where they should be, and I mean, just like the notes, they're intense. And there's even, you know, there's tons of characters. Um, there's the Ewok battle bag that I was talking about. We didn't end up using it, but you know, the side view of the shuttle Tiderian, so just all this stuff. Okay, and then after uh, I would make these art guides for Kevin, he would, you know, after a few weeks, come back to me with all of this photo montage painted art. And sometimes, you know, they're very, very small characters. So um, he really got into the weeds with all the detail. And you can see, like, we, we have this um, ATST from all these different angles. There's Chewy that's supposed to be coming out of the top. All these extra um, biker scouts and stormtroopers that we can put in the forest. But these are all the shapes that I had asked him to make, pretty close to it. So here's what, here's, here's my notes of kind of what I needed just rough, and then that's what he did in the final. Wow. So it's much, you know, obviously it's much more beautiful. It is the actual art for the book. And, um, but he does, he does all the pieces. A lot of the stuff is in, in layers, so I can pull apart this from the trees in the background. And there were times when, and there are even characters that didn't get used, like these um, marauders from the Ewok um, t television movies, and this blurg. Um, but, uh, you know, he just made all the details. There were some times when I had to make a little bit more 
than what I needed, just in case I had some space to put something in. And your work, it's, it's fun for you. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the fun of the whole thing. You talked about playing as a kid with your action figures. Like this is like the pieces so that you then make your play set. It it's, it's amazing, you know, I, I think about it a lot where, where it's like, God, how did this, I'm still doing this, you know, like I'm still playing with my toys or playing with, you know, I'm still making stuff out of with my, you know, cardboard, but this is my job now. It's, it's, it's kind of surreal. But it's, it, you know, it's it's fun. It's still work. You know, I, I um, it's it's not it's not easy, uh, but I really, you know, I enjoy it. I get a lot of satisfaction from from the process of you know creating something. And it, it's important for me, I guess, with the work I do. I want to. I, I hope that I can inspire other young artists. Um, I think art education is extremely important. Um, so I think it's also like. Um, hopefully inspire uh, creativity, not necessarily with just what I do, but just anything. Just, just get your hands dirty and just make stuff. That's what it's about. Like that's what this is. This is that's what this all starts with. It's not super fancy. Here you think, you know, I'm working with all these, you know, I'm working with Disney and I'm working all these things. You know, you think that it's this, you know, I'm this big production, and it's just me cutting up paper and folding and seeing how it works and failing a lot, but sometimes getting some good stuff.